Well, I do hope <clears throat> that you and yours had a uh, had a blessed Thanksgiving time. Families change, seasons of life change. And I'm grateful that our forefathers, those who landed on this shore in 1620, hammered out a difficult existence so that half of those coming over on the Mayflower didn't make it through the first winter. But they recognized the fact that they did, they owed to God. And they gave thanks. And I'm grateful that through the years, those in charge of our government saw the wisdom, the propriety of setting aside a Thursday in November as Thanksgiving Day. Because it makes us stop. We know from the scriptures, in everything give thanks, the scriptures teach. In everything give thanks. And yet we've got to confess, you know, we, we don't give thanks in everything, but the scripture says we should. And so this celebration kind of puts the brakes on a frenetic life. But as Joshua mentioned, <laughs> In this strange culture that we live in, and I, I've told you before, the longer I live, the stranger I feel. I, uh, there's a gospel song that we learned growing up. And one of the lines is, I just don't feel at home in this world anymore. The, the bizarre uh, juxtaposition of Thanksgiving on Thursday and Black Friday, the day following, really not the day following, two o'clock Thursday afternoon. Uh, I was going to actually show some video, but I couldn't find any that was, that was not rated, that was rated G. Decided I don't want our children to see adults slugging it out over a TV. I don't want to see grown people trampling one another into, not, not running from a flood, not, not running from an earthquake, not running from a disaster, not even running from the, from the, the great buffalo <laughs> move across the, the wilderness, but running into a department store. I didn't want them to see the words subscripted that were being, had to be bleeped out that people were saying to one another. Tis the season. Tis the season. I told you we've entered into, I think it was last week, we've entered into to my uh, most special season of the year. Season of Thanksgiving. The season of, of Christmas, of giving. I'm not, I'm not one of those guys I know, I know adults who are like this, who get all pouty and upset if they don't get a certain thing or, or, or some people don't, they don't feel like some people pay enough attention to them for Christmas. I'm not one of those guys. I enjoy giving. I always have. I enjoy this season. No, we're not commanded to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ in the scriptures. And therefore, some people, even the Puritans, outlawed Christmas in the 1600s for a period of time. And I'm not one of these guys that goes around, bah, hung, bug up. I read an article on the Facebook from folks, from guys that I know that, you know, if you, have a, if you have a nativity in your church, shame on you. You're practicing idolatry. I, I, that's, you know, I don't. That's, tell you what, if, if we end up with a nativity out in the foyer again next Sunday, and I see somebody on their knees bowing before it, worshiping, we'll probably remove it and have, help that person to work through the commandments. But I love this season of the year. I love it. But you cannot have your eyes open and not realize that it's a prop for many to worship 
the ultimate God of this culture, and that is the God of consumerism. And so we are strangers in a foreign land. So it seemed to me, typically in this season of the year, if, you, if you've not been with us very long, in this season of the year, we, I typically will, will carve out several weeks and preach a series since, since the Christians' uh, sensitivities are heightened to the birth of Jesus. And we do it different ways. And this year, I, I just really believe the Lord is leading me to uh, take a look and what we looked at January the 1st, 2017, the year kind of challenging one another as we get ready to launch into 2018. And so the series is entitled, Hear the Bells Ringing. By the way, have you heard them yet? Have you heard them? Have you been in front of some stores? Walmart, jingle, 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 jingle. Target, they're ringing, they're ringing. And I told you last week that my heart's desire is, and I think I may have said this Sunday night, huh, that as you hear the ringing of the bells, and as we sing the songs of the season, songs of the incarnation, and we're going to be doing that intentionally. And by the way, while I'm thinking about it, we have planned, God willing, Sunday, December the 24th, not only to have our morning service, uh, but to have a special evening service where we will just devote the time at five o'clock to singing. Uh, some call them the Christmas carols. They're the, and they were written as hymns originally, the hymns of the incarnation, the hymns of the birth of Jesus, and we will just saturate one another with those and have a, have a service together from five to six to allow time for you to spend with your family if you're going to be in town <clears throat> and then and bring them with you. You can bill it as a, a good old-fashioned traditional Christmas Eve service. We'll be singing the great hymns that we love. So with that in mind, we're going to reflect upon our Savior who was born and who grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man and he grew up to be one incredible human being and the faithful obedient son of God and we can learn from him if we will so I want you to find in your Bibles Acts chapter 10 verses 34 to 38. Forget, I got a little tickle in my throat. I sang myself silly a while ago, just rejoicing in those wonderful lyrics. Acts chapter 10, verses 34 to 38, part one of a series that will carry us through to the end of the, of the year, through the 31st of December. Hear the bells ringing. Stand with me if you would. Acts 10, 34 to 38. If you don't have a Bible, to turn to. I really want you to look in your Bible. I want you to hold it. I want you to gaze upon it. See what the Word of God says. What is contained in the Word of God. But if you don't have a Bible, we've got the text on the screen. It's important to me that you see it as well as hear it. So Peter opened his mouth and said, truly, I understand that God shows no partiality. But in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. As for the word that he sent to Israel, preaching good news of peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. You yourselves know what happened throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee after the baptism that John proclaimed, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. What have we just read together? The inerrant, infallible, all-sufficient Word of God. What would you like on your epitaph? 
how people would remember you. I'll tell you what, it'd be hard to improve upon this. He went about doing good. Thank you. Please be seated. Peter has uh, just experienced an amazing thing. He's been summoned by the Spirit of God to go to the home of a Gentile, Cornelius, an unclean, unwashed Gentile, this Jew, going to their home and preach the good news to him and his family. With some trepidation, some misunderstanding, he obediently goes. And he finds a group of people hungering, aching to hear what he has to say about Jesus of Nazareth. And he preaches the good news of peace to them. And they are converted. The Holy Spirit falls upon the place in a way, not a normative way, but in a way that Peter would have recognized was the, was the sovereign approval of the Spirit because he reports back to his, his Jewish Christian friends that the Spirit came upon them just as he did on us at Pentecost. It teaches us something about Pentecost that I won't take the time to get into today just except to say that, that that's how you understand it. It's, it's the Spirit's sign of approval that God is in this. God was on Jesus. That he was the Son of God, the Messiah. And so Peter reports back, and of course they're troubled. They're, how in the world? Why? What, why would you defile yourself by going into the home of a Gentile of all things? And he said, Who was I to resist God? And so this text tells us something about that experience. We're going to focus in on what he says about Jesus. Verse 38. That he was anointed with the Holy Spirit and with power. And he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil for God was with him. Some of you were not here then. Some of you will remember in... 2014, when we entered 2014, we introduced to you a concept, and Brother Norman was, was kind to design this, to draw it up. Uh, we called it B to B, but it really was just, that was just shorthand for blessed to bless, or blessed to be a blessing. And, and we took this acrostic of bless and told you to think intentionally about blessing others. That the B, begin, begin with prayer. Ask God how he wants you to bless the people he's sent to you or sent you to. L, to listen to people. Identify their needs. Have you ever tried this? Just listen to somebody and ask questions. Do you know that the practical total strangers will unburden their life on you if they find out you will listen. Do you realize how few people listen? So we talked about that. Eat. Eat a meal or meat for coffee. So just to sit down with somebody in one of the most uh, engaging, encouraging environments at the table. Doesn't have to be a big spread like we had Thursday or uh, Josh prepared this, he smoked this fabulous brisket. I'm trying to prevail upon him to do that for our, for our deacon and staff uh, Christmas party. I think I've almost got him there. Karen fixed her world famous cornbread dressing. You can take that stuff, cut a slice of it, put it on top of your head, your tongue will beat your brains out trying to get to it. It's delicious. We had gumbo. She fixed her famous seafood gumbo. Spent enough years in Louisiana that she really became quite the Cajun cook. You don't have to have a spread like that. Casseroles, 
desserts, tums, maybe a cup of coffee, a piece of pie, just to sit down at a table, on a bench, on the ground, and share with somebody. We talked about S, serve, serve them based on the needs identified. If you've listened, you've heard the cry of their heart. And it's purpose to serve them and then to share the story of how Jesus has changed your life. That was Bless, 2014. I'd love to tell you it was transformative. Sadly, it was not. It was a tremendous idea because it's right out of the scriptures, right out of the heart of our Savior. And last year we introduced you to, to something that we found uh, in a book entitled Surprise the World, uh, the concept of bells. Another acrostic. You're wise if you, if you take both of these, both bless and bells in because, because one of the, the B in bells is to bless. And so under bless you've got this substructure of that very word. The book was Surprise the World. It asked the question, are you living a questionable life? Based on 1 Peter 3, 15 and 16, but in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy. Always be prepared, being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Do you realize that this season of the year, as joyous as it is for many of us, is the time of the year when more people, a larger percentage of people, are depressed than at any other time of the year. It's a season that reminds them of hopes shattered, dreams vaporized, life unfulfilled, relationships broken, Finances stretched. You now have an opportunity to enter the chaos that is this season with joy and hope. And if you do that obviously and persistently, you won't have to walk up to somebody and say, Would you like to know why it is I hope? That I have hope. They'll ask you. They'll ask you. And so this Bell's acrostic, for those of you who have not seen it before, takes in the B, which is the challenge to bless three people each week, or just not hung up on the numbers, but bless, intentionally bless people each week, at least one of whom is not a member of our church. If you have an opportunity, we, you saw it up on the screen, do good to all men, the scripture says, especially those who are of the household of faith. Paul told the churches in Galatia that. You have an opportunity to bless some families in our congregation who can use a blessing at this time of year. Challenge you to do it. To rise up to it. It's easy. You give to the cold water fund. And I promise you, every bit of that will be channeled to bless some families. The E stands for eat. Again, the idea is to eat with three people a week at least one of whom is not a church member. We're not hung up on numbers, but purpose, purpose to, to go out of your way. You can invite someone into your home. You can invite someone to go get coffee with you. But just purposefully share table fellowship. Do you realize the statement that you make when you say, come, let's go do this with coffee, pie, sell, whatever, you know, just come, let's go do this. Uh, when you say, come into my home, I want to have you over. Do you realize what you're saying to that person? We value you. I want to welcome you into one of the most uh, precious arenas we have in our lives, our home. And in this, this season, Hospitality abounds. Karen and I have been talking about this as I've been making preparation for this series. Years ago, we did something, and 
And I think we're going to crank it up again, and we'll just have to find the calendar time to do that, where we, where we break the congregation up by alphabet and invite everybody in the church in, in sections and in groups to come into our home just to share with one another. To say to you in a tangible way, we love you, we value you, we want you in our lives, and we want to be in your lives. The next is, hell is listen. Listen to the Holy Spirit's leading. It, it involves contemplative meditation. It involves taking what you know the Lord teaches and just get alone. Do you realize how, oh, confession, that is difficult for me still. These are habits that have got to be cultivated. Karen says to me from time to time, you, you always have to give a word on, you, you always have to have input, don't you? I said, I don't intend to. She said, I don't think, I didn't say it was intentional. It's habitual. I'm learning that I need to be quiet and listen. Not just listen, as we said earlier, to someone's heart, but listen to the heart of God. What are you teaching me, Lord? What do you see in me? Search me, O oh God. Try me. Discover in me anything that is obnoxious to you. And cleanse me. Bring me to repentance and cleanse me. And fill me. Just to listen to God. This culture hates silence. Just notice sometime when you're walking around. Notice the number of young people and adults who walk around planet Earth with earbuds in, and they've either got it tucked away or they're looking at it. It's almost as if they fear silence and solitude. And yet Don Whitney in his book, Spiritual Disciplines of the Christian Life, said silence and solitude are necessities if you're going to grow as a follower of Jesus Christ. The other L in Bells is learn. Learn to be more like Jesus. Do you know the Bible teaches that Jesus learned obedience by the things that he suffered? We're going to look at these things in the next few weeks. Learn to be more like Jesus. You don't just by osmosis become like Jesus. In fact, by osmosis, you will, go, you will move away from becoming like Jesus. Your remaining sin will shape you and mold you, not Christ-likeness. Learn. We give opportunities for that. Bible study is one of them. If you're missing Bible study, you're not doing everything you can to learn to be more like Jesus. We have wonderful Bible teachers here. Morning worship. Evening time. Your own personal study. Now it may well be that you have a personal plan of study that is so far superior to what we do at Bible study at 930. 6 o'clock on Sunday nights, 7 o'clock on Wednesday evenings, that, it, that it, your, your personal study makes this pale. Well, good, contact me. I want to know what it is. I want to know what it is because I want to incorporate it in, in the life of this church. Learn to be more like Jesus. God put this golden chain of grace in place so that we would be conformed to the image of Christ. You will not naturally react in a Christ-like and godly way to the culture. But you will supernaturally respond if you're intentionally learning to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. And then sent, live sent, that's the S. Realize that when you get up in the morning, whatever your day holds before you, wherever you're gonna find yourself, intentionally or in, the, in just responding to the process of the day, that you have been sent there by the Savior. We have a sending God who sent His Son. That's what we're going to be talking about the next several weeks. You say, well, that doesn't interest me at all. Okay, just hang in there with us. Humor me then. Because it should interest people who say, I've been saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ, and I want to know Him. I have been blessed by him, and I know I'm blessed not to suck it all in and become a big, fat, dumb, lazy American who says, feed me, feed me, give to me, me. 
I've been blessed to be a blessing. I've been filled to empty myself on those around me. We're going to look at that the next few weeks. You see, and that's why I said when you go out, and you're going to be going out, you're going to go to the grocery store, you're going to go into a research, there are the bells, ling, 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 ling. I hope, I hope it triggers in your mind. You're like, Wherever you go. If you're on the radio, you're going you're gonna to hear, if you've got the right station, hear the bells ringing. They're singing that we should be born again. I heard the bells on Christmas Day. I, I hope all of that comes to be a, 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 an audible graphic to remind us that we have an opportunity to recharge, to maximize our space on planet Earth during this season to be like Jesus. But their habits, I told you that last year, their habits. You won't walk out here today saying, I like that, I'm gonna do that. No, it's, would, let me ask you, would any of your children be brushing their teeth if you had not built into them the habit of brushing their teeth? I had five. I got 11 grandchildren. Now, two of them are just getting teeth, so brushing, but, when my kids were growing up and when I keep my grandkids, did you brush your teeth? No, oh, no, 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 okay, I'm gonna brush your teeth. Did you use toothpaste? Well, I'm gonna okay, put toothpaste on the brush. Yeah, I mean, it's a habit. We, it never occurred to us to say, well, you know, dental hygiene is important, but because it's so important, I know they'll pick it up on their own. Never trusted that. Didn't wanna pay the dental bill. Didn't want to grow up toothless. These are habits, folks. Habits. You cultivate them by intentionally remembering them, purposing to do them, repenting when you miss the opportunities, asking God to help you and give you the grace to bear the fruit of repentance so that it looks more like this. Bells. So, our text. Three things. We bless others like Jesus did by showing no partiality. We bless others like Jesus did by speaking the good news of peace. We bless others like Jesus did by doing good. I just went through one gospel, the gospel of Matthew. But what, what jumps out about Jesus? Well, so that you know, he cleansed a leper. He healed a centurion's servant. And the centurion said, if you come, Jesus said, I don't need to come. Go, your servant's healed. He healed Peter's mother-in-law. So much for papal abstinence. He healed the diseased and demon-possessed. He healed a paralytic. He raised a little girl from the dead. He healed two blind men, healed a man who was unable to speak. He promised to give rest to those who were weary, healed a man with a withered hand, fed thousands of people twice. He blessed the children. That's just in Matthew's gospel. You could add that he raised Lazarus from the dead, that he healed 10 lepers, and on and on and on. He went about doing good, not accidentally, not reactionarily, intentionally. John chapter 4, they were on a journey. They didn't have to go to, through Samaria to get there. There was actually a, short, a faster way. But John 4 records, and he had to go through Samaria. Why? Because there was a woman from Sychar at the well. And he had, to, he had to meet her. He had to encounter her. He went about doing good intentionally. That's our Savior. So you see, we bless others like Jesus did, as Peter says, by showing no partiality. Look, he opened his mouth, explaining to his Christian Jewish friends who were appalled that he had the gall to go into the home of a Gentile for crying out loud. He said, no, but truly I understand that God doesn't show partiality. 
Neither did Jesus. We sing red and yellow, black and white, or red, yellow, brown, black, white, they're all precious in his sight. But then we don't act that way. To bless like Jesus did, we've got to be willing to bless those who are different from us. That may have with that the need to get your hands dirty. Blessing in an antiseptic way is not acceptable. Jesus touched lepers. That was a no no, it was a big taboo. You let the shadow of a leper fall over you if you were an Orthodox Jew and you were on your way to synagogue, you went back home because you had to get cleansed. You couldn't walk defiled into the place of worship. No partiality. This season of the year not only brings a lot of depression, it brings out people who are in great need. Uh, we will have, if, if this is standard, folks calling the church office, folks pulling up, running down the list of churches because they're, they're desperate for whatever reason. They're desperate. You'll bump into them. I'm not suggesting now that everybody that's sitting on the side of the road says we work for food, that you put money into their hat or whatever, their bowl, and watch them go get in their car and drive. I'm, not, I'm just saying be sensitive and don't, don't rule out who you should touch, who you should bless. Be open to that. Secondly, we, we bless others like Jesus did by speaking the good news of peace. The gospel, when, when, when heard in the heart, brings peace to the soul. And it's great to, in a loving way, just engage people. Isn't this a wonderful season? Why do you think it's wonderful? Because it just reminds us that God so loved the world that he gave Jesus to come and save us from our sins. We all have needs, but none of us have the greatest, none of us escape having the greatest need, and that is the need to be delivered from our sins. Because if we're not delivered from our sins, our sins will deliver us to hell. But I have good news. To, to break in on somebody who's grumbling, ah, oh, I'll tell you, this is that was so horrible, that miserable, blah, blah, blah. Boy, you know, there's a lot to complain about. But I'm grateful that there's a reason to rejoice, too. Brings peace. The gospel brings peace. We don't need to beat people over the head with it and, and, and carry on like a capital F fundamentalist. We can just lovingly remind them that there's good news for those who will hear it. And there's peace for those who receive it. Peter said that as far as the word sent to Israel, preaching good news of the peace through Jesus Christ. You yourselves know. The church is, as the church is proactive and in intentionally blessing others and looking to be kind, be kind. If you happen to go into the stores, be kind to those folks working in the stores. They're not getting paid a whole lot, and they're certainly not getting paid enough to get, take anybody's lip. And yet that's what they're going to get from a lot of people. Be kind. Bless them. Intentionally bless. Thank you. Thank you so much for finding that. Thank you for pointing out where that is. God bless you. Have a wonderful Christmas. I've been doing the, having the wonderful Thanksgiving day leading up to that, and now I'm, I'm shifting gears. I don't, I don't start, do what you want, I don't start Christmas stuff until after Thanksgiving's over, because Thanksgiving's my favorite holiday. I don't want that to get lost in, in, in the shuffle. We set a record this year, by the way. Karen and I actually got, with, with the help of our oldest granddaughter and, and some of the grandkids, actually got our Christmas stuff put up Good Friday. It's not Good Friday, it's Black Friday. We usually get it up Good Friday. We're a little late, typically. Black Friday. There's very few things good about Black Friday. 
Got it up. Feel good about it. Enjoying the lights. As long as I don't look up and down the street at what, what my neighbors are doing, then I feel pretty chintzy. But as long as I just look at mine, I feel really good. Enjoying them. Love the season. Bless people. Speak kindly to them. Speak peace to them. We, we bless others like Jesus did when we intentionally go about doing good. You have an opportunity to, to let somebody in line, to help somebody, to defer. As, as, as Josh spoke earlier, Jesus went around doing good intentionally, but a part of the good that he did was he denied himself. The only thing he had to have was you and me, all that the Father gave him. That's the only thing he had to have. He didn't have a place to sleep. Birds have nests, foxes have holes. The Son of Man has no place to lay his head. So when he showed hospitality, he did it this way. Think about it. He went to their house. Zacchaeus, come down. I'm going to eat with you tonight. Now that would trouble some of us unless you knew that he was able to take a lunch and feed thousands of people with it, then you should not worry that we might run out of food. Went to Pharisees' homes. He showed hospitality by stepping into their lives. Because he didn't have a place to lay his head. For him to say, come go to my house. Oops. If you trust in me, one day you will go to my house. <laughs> well, we can't go eat anywhere right now that I can call mine. One day I'm going to go to a prayer place for you, and when I do, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there you may be also. I do have a house, but I left that to come here. I don't have one here. Intentionally stepping into people's lives. Intentionally denying yourself. Because you see, folks, that's different all the time. But at this time of year, when, when, when the lust of consumption is driving people mad, and we step in, no, go ahead. You go ahead. Can I help you with that? Here, let me get that for you. And you've got to be careful with that because... If somebody thinks you're getting it for yourself, they'll trample you. But if you can convince them that you'll actually get it and let them have it, it'll be okay. He went about doing good. And so should we. So should we. The habits have got to be cultivated. You will not bless automatically. But if you remind yourself every day when you rise, dear God, I am so blessed. Help me today to reflect my gratitude to you for the super abundant blessings that you have loaded me down with benefits, that you have caused the lines of my life to fall out in favorable places. Oh God, help me to reflect to heaven as the angels peer over to see what happens when a person gets saved and to the world around me that I realize I'm blessed and I realize that I've been blessed to be a blessing. See, I think, is it, is it fair to say that once we're saved, the only reason to leave us on planet Earth is that we might bless others in Jesus' name. Because heaven's a whole lot better than this. And he leaves us here. There's no program, there's no plan, there's no sermon series that I can preach that will, that will stick this in you. But what I can do is I can challenge you in these next few weeks to take this seriously if you see it in the heart and life of our Savior. If you really believe that he went around blessing people, if you see that he, that he ate with sinners, that was one of the charges leveled against him, 
that he listened to the, to the Father who by the Spirit spoke to him and told him what to say and what to do. That he himself learned, as I said a while ago, obedience by the things that he suffered. And that he lived absolutely aware that he was sent by the Father. If you see that in the heart of the Savior and you want to be more like Jesus, then I challenge you to wrap your mind, wrap your, your heart, your arms around these next several weeks. And if we will listen and receive, then one of the things it will do is it will serve to be a, an, an antidote, a, an antitoxin to what's happening all around you in the culture. But more than that, it will conform you to the image of Jesus Christ. And for some of you, it will discover in you that the reason this doesn't stick on you is that because you have never truly trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And what a wonderful blessing that would be if you enter this season knowing you're unconverted or enter this season thinking you're converted and end this season truly, genuinely in Christ. The greatest blessing of all. Are you aware that you're blessed? No matter where you are in life, I mean, some of you are struggling with some difficulties you've never faced before. But are you aware that you're blessed? Do you realize that whatever you had to eat Thursday was probably several times more than the orphans in Haiti eat? These are the ones who are cared for by Christian churches. Forget the ones that have to dig through the garbage heaps to try to find food the little children of India, Mumbai, India, who hope they'll find something in the garbage heaps that they can eat, that once having eaten it, they won't throw it up. We're blessed, brothers and sisters. We are blessed, super abundantly blessed. But we're blessed by the blessed God who blesses us the way he does, Paul says, so that we can be a blessing to others. That's my challenge to you as we leave today. Will you purpose intentionally to be a blessing to your brothers and sisters in Christ here, but to those you don't know, those you encounter, strangers you may see one time in your life, but leave the taste, the sweet aroma of Jesus Christ upon them by your commitment to bless. Because Jesus did that when he lived the perfect life, died on the cross for you and me, and rose from the grave, the greatest blessing we would ever receive in life. Salvation by grace through faith in him. Let's pray. Dear Holy Father, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we're so grateful today. We have a Savior in Jesus Christ who saves to the uttermost, who, who in heaven for all of eternity past was being blessed by the angels, if it's even possible to say day and night in heaven, but was being continually, perpetually blessed by the angelic host and yet who gave that up, who left that to come to this dusty earth where he would be despised and rejected by sons of Adam and daughters of Eve and ultimately abandoned by you on the cross and he did that that he might bless us. Oh Lord, those of us who name the name of Jesus, help us to live today, tonight, tomorrow, the days coming more than we have in the past perhaps determined that as sinners saved by grace through faith in Christ that we will be a blessing to others because we have been super abundantly blessed by God. Help us to make a difference this Christmas in someone's life. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.